I left for this hiking trip. You hike? Mountain climb specifically. You asked for the story. Don't fucking interrupt me. They're driving through unplowed streets. Apparently, Tetsu and Kirishima decided to switch cars with Tetsu Tetsu needing to go check in with his wife in their mechanic shop instead of coming with them. Bakugo isn't exactly complaining about that. Kirishima's taking the roads like a pro, pushing through to make large, towering snowbanks on either side of them. Bakugo's riding shotgun. Ashido's in the back seat with Riot. She's leaning so far forward over the console, she might as well be in the front seat as Bakugo tries to explain the cat thief incident. So I'm out of town for four days, nothing insane, but I asked the purple-haired asshole to watch my cat. He didn't even have to stay, just check in with her every day, food and water, all that shit. I had officially had her for barely a month at this point. Oh, officially. Kirishima doesn't take his eyes off the road. Bakugo doesn't yell at him like he did Ashido. Yeah, she was a stray I'd been beating for a while until I managed to snap her up and get her checked out by a vet and shipped. She fucking hated it. I called her my flight risk because she wasn't used to being inside yet and always tried to run out. Apparently Shinso saw that as me being a piss poor owner. Sarah and Kaminari are in another car behind them. Following as Kirishima cuts a path for them all up through the slowly thickening forest as the buildings all fade out. A hidden trail leading them through and up the mountains. Bakugo isn't sure how Kirishima keeps to the road so closely besides having everything up the hillsides perfectly memorized. Even when the snow has covered everything laid out before them. Kirishima has thrown Bakugo's snowboard in his own into the truck bed before he came back to the end to pick everyone up. The other three had piled in a pair of skis, a sled, and another board on top of it all, excited to race out into the cold air. It still took some time, waiting for the cakes to come out of the oven, and Ashido insisted they make another ten paper cranes each for the tree before they started changing into snow gear. Kirishima had even brought Bakugo a spare set of his own, saying he didn't feel comfortable going through Bakugo's bags to find his own. It was dumb, but Bakugo appreciated it. Now, he wore a snowsuit a size or two too big for him, but it was warm even if he looked a little clumsy in the black outfit. He found himself sinking back into the oversized collar, inhaling deep and feeling a sense of calm he didn't entirely understand. It should have smelt of mothballs or stale air, but instead smelled so comforting. He decided, seeing as I was gone, it was the perfect opportunity to take her and give her a good home. Oh my god. Ashido gasped softly. Dinky is dating an asshole. Bakugo barks out a sharp laugh at that, missing how Kirishima takes his eyes off the road to look at him just that once. I came home a day early and he was trying to force her into a carrier. A mutual friend of ours actually had to stop me from punching him a few times. Cat clawed the shit out of him, though. Bastard deserved it. He gives Ashido a wide grin, rolling his shoulders as he slumps back in his seat. She's transfixed by the story. Needless to say, I got her back and she's perfectly happy with me now. Still a grumpy bitch sometimes. But I made her this nice patio setup so she can still go outside without running off to get hit by a car or some shit like that. Ashido leans against his chair, batting her lashes at him. Her smile isn't nearly as annoying as it should be. Aw, aren't you just a good cat, Daddy? Bakugo rolls his eyes, shoving her back as she laughs with Riot jumping atop her, licking at her cheek. Bakugo's still smiling, though. He can feel it in his cheeks. He's been smiling a lot since they got into the car, he thinks. It's strange. Ashido is annoyingly loud, but she fills in the conversation when it grows quiet and is good about making sure Bakugo is included, even when he curses and grumbles about it. It makes him feel like a proper guest, like he's welcomed in and not just some displaced tourist. The rest of the drive is filled with conversation and, for once, Bakugo doesn't mind it so much. He learns more about Kirishima, more about Ashido, more about their friends. The outgoing girl dragging an apparently shy Kirishima around with her, helping him come out of his shell. Bakugo can't imagine Kirishima as anything except loud, boisterous, with a headstrong attitude that leaves him opening his mouth to speak long before he can think about it. Apparently, he was nothing as he is now for a long time up until he got into his teens, getting into high school by the time he finally came into himself. At some points, Bakugo and Ashido gang up on Kirishima 
poking and teasing until Kirishima comes back with a vengeance, reminding Ashido of terrible dates and embarrassing moments when they were idiots in school. Bakugo just laughs at them both, rubbing it in that they have nothing on him, and quick to mention that he was just as amazing in high school as he is now. It's nice. He feels good here in this moment, and it shows in the soft roll of his shoulders. The easy way he lets his eyes crinkle up when he actually laughs. He can't remember the last time a holiday, let alone Christmas, felt this lively. He keeps stealing glances at Kirishima, and it seems the redhead is doing much the same as their eyes keep catching one another. It takes them a while to get up to the spot on the mountain that opens up for them, a smooth downhill slope with few trees and a clear view of the buildings and houses far below, dotted through the forest. The town is scattered and carved out way off in the distance. The sun is high and bright in the sky now, the afternoon creating a perfect blanket to fight off the harsh chill so far up in the sky. When Bakugo hops from the truck, his boots sink into the soft powder of the mountain, crunching with every step he takes. Everything is untouched still, looking just as fresh as it did in the morning. The sun shines down on the snow, harsh reflections bouncing back, making Bakugo squint pulling the goggles he's borrowing down over his eyes as he stares off down the hillside. At night, he bets the town looks beautiful from up here, all glowing with the speckles of rainbow Christmas lights all over the place. Typically, he finds stuff like that stupid. Why aren't you guys busier for the season? He asks as he starts pulling their gear from the truck. Seems like this would be the perfect spot for the holidays. People swarm all over the resort. It's nuts. This shit is... Way better. We don't advertise. Sarah shrugs next to him, helping pull the set of skis from the truck bed. Years ago, some developer came around wanting to buy everyone out to make another resort, but everyone told him no. Every once in a while, someone else pops up, but they never stick around long. Eventually, some lawyer will get involved and we'll all be screwed, I bet. Kaminari pipes up, starting to drag the sled off. You don't even live here anymore, do you? Here or not, it's still my home. Bakugo rolls his eyes, helping with the other boards and gear thrown in the back. Saro and Ashido take their own stuff, following Kaminari up the slope, leaving Bakugo looking around to hand off Kirishima's own board. It takes him a moment, having to come around the other side of the truck to spot him. He's standing out in the middle of the incline, Riot by his side just staring down the mountain at all the trees and the little buildings below. He's got his hat pulled down tight over his ears. Long red hair still whip around his face, but he doesn't seem to mind. His eyes look distant. Bakugo is silent as he walks closer, Riot looking back at him but doesn't bark. He stops a few meters off, just watching Kirishima. The sunlight looks good on him. His nose already red, his cheeks tinged pink. His eyelashes are long and so noticeable from this angle. There's a smile tugging at the corner of his mouth. Bakugo doesn't want to interrupt, doesn't want to look away. He could stand here just staring at Kirishima for a long while and not mind the cold as much as he always does. Would you give all this up for money? Kirishima's voice cuts through the silence of the winter around them. Bakugo takes pause for a moment, glancing around at the scenery, and then his eyes find their way back to Kirishima. Back to this man who looks so fully at peace right in this moment on the side of a mountain with his dog, calf deep in the snow. His throat gets tight in a way that has nothing to do with the high elevation or the chill. No, he says, knowing it to be the truth in this moment. I don't think I would. Kirishima turns back to him, smile even wider as he shakes off whatever warm melancholy he got lost in. Come on. We don't want everyone else destroying the snow before we can get on it. He gets close enough to take his board from Bakugo's grasp. Gloved hands touch, and Bakugo feels scorched. They walk together, following the footprints left behind and the noises of Kirishima's friends growing louder the further up they go. Turns out, Kaminari doesn't snowboard or ski, but he tries. He looks like an idiot doing it. Ashido and Saro are very patient with him sharing their board and skis respectfully and letting him make a complete ass out of himself as he tries to get further than a few meters without falling straight on his ass. Bakugo's pretty sure they only let him do it to laugh at him and Kaminari doesn't seem to mind the embarrassing falls either as he sits up, 
shakes snow from his hair and keeps trying, switching back and forth after Ashido and Saro take a run. Bakugo watches them together sitting off under a tree, his board in place and waits for Kirishima to get situated himself. He seems a little bit rusty with the awkward way he struggles to get his boots strapped in. After a moment of watching him, Bakugo huffs and leans forward, shoving his feet into place and pulling the binding tight. Don't tell me you're going to look like him in a second. Bakugo jabs a finger at Kaminari, who falls face first into the snow, shaking clumps from his hair and hat. Kirishima scoffs, shoving at Bakugo. This is my mountain, bro. You'll have a perfect view of my back in a second. Oh, you fucking wish. They wrestle each other as they get up, pulling and tugging at clothes, tripping each other with their boards. It leaves Bakugo red in the face from excursion, getting thrown back with a solid shove that leaves him breathless as he lays in the snow thinking about the arms that just put him there. He's irritated that winter requires so much clothing right now. Cheater. He shouts as finally he gets his footing under him and starts moving towards Kirishima to which he can hear his laughter catching in the wind. He picks up speed quickly and somewhere in the back of his mind a small voice is telling him to stop being an ass because he doesn't know this terrain, this mountain. But he's also been ignoring that voice for almost all of his life, so it's easy to tell it to piss off and keep moving. In front of him, Kirishima looks more comfortable moving than he did sitting down, but still Bakugo can tell his balance is shaky. His weight is off, and it's easy to get next to him. They turn to look at each other, smiling, and then Kirishima is quick to cut in front of him, spraying snow in his wake. Oh, you asshole. Bakugo yells out, brushing the flurry from his face and continuing on after the other man. Apparently, Kirishima wasn't as much of a beginner as Bakugo originally thought. He runs after him down the slope quick once more to catch up and even quicker to get in front of him. He weaves in and out, taking down his speed but forcing Kirishima to do the same as they start winding in between each other, back and forth, like a dance within the snow. Bakugo takes the lead once more, speeding down until the slope plateaus into a small ledge and comes to a sharp stop, carving into the fresh snow. It only takes Kirishima a second to catch up, doing much the same as he pivots and comes to a stop beside Bakugo, panting. Dude, that was amazing. Your control is insane. You're not too bad yourself. Bakugo says, pushing his goggles up and grinning from ear to ear. There's a warm thrumming in his chest that he can't pin on any of the other snowboarding runs he's taken before. He knows how it feels for his lungs to burn with the need for air, even if it leaves icicles in his throat, or how his legs are like lead after a long day up and down a mountain. But this, he's never felt this kind of surge before. The space between them is filled with heavy breathing, but the lack of words doesn't bother Bakugo at all. He wants to bottle up this emotion and keep it forever, adrenaline driving through his body like he just pulled someone out from a collapsing building. But this time, it's that rush without feeling like he might actually die any second. No, right now he feels so much more alive. He wants to close the distance. He wants to pull Kirishima in and make sure he feels this too. He... Out of the way... Both of them have half a second to stumble back, falling into the snow, before a blur of color topped in a shock of yellow rushes past them. They look on as the sled hits the plateau hard, and instead of slowing down or keeping on its downward path, it flies up a few meters with a loud shout before plummeting to the ground in a mess of sled and body. The pair stare at each other for another beat before they're both ripping the bindings from their feet, darting off into the snow to follow the crumpled path that Kaminari just made. Dinky. Holy shit. There's some more yelling behind them getting closer, but Bakugo and Kirishima don't pay it any mind as they fall to their knees at Kaminari's body half buried in the snow. Don't move him. Don't. Uh oh. A groan interrupts Bakugo, his hand still right above the lump that is Kaminari as the man shifts, rolling over onto his back to look up at them, blinking snow from his eyes. Okay, how solid did I look right before I crashed? Bakugo just stares at him wide-eyed, not knowing what to say, and Kirishima falls back into the snow with a groan of his own, rubbing at his forehead. Dinky bro, what the fuck? Are you okay? Ashido and Saro come sliding into view, screaming at the same time as they fall around Kaminari as well, 
completing the little circle around his body. He gives a thumbs up and laughs as well as he can, but ends up coughing halfway through it. Fine, totally fine, except don't think I'm going to be going down anymore today. Sarah looks just about ready to pull his hair out. One of us already has a concussion, you idiot. You could have killed yourself. Kaminari sits up slowly, wincing only slightly as he rolls his shoulders before peering up at the faces of his worried friends. But seriously, how cool was that? Ashido hits him. They make their way back up the mountain slowly, with Ashido still yelling at Kaminari, roughly pulling at him for someone so worried. But thankfully, he doesn't seem injured much beyond being sore and very likely earning a few bruises from his fall. Kirishima carries both his board and the sled, the weight looking easy on his shoulders. It makes Bakugo bringing up the rear of the group worth it to watch the way his arms shift to balance it all together. Getting back up to their cars, everyone takes a moment to rest when Saro breaks out thermoses of tea, pouring warmth back into their bodies with every sip. It's still early, but the cold sinks in deep and fast, especially the longer they keep still. Bakugo is content to sit on the hood of Tetsu Tetsu's pickup with Ashido by his side after turning down the offer of another run, slowly drinking his tea, mostly keeping his gloved hands warm with it. He figures it's best to take it a little easy with his body still trying to piece itself back together after the car crash. The pressure behind his eyes is telling him he should probably rest soon, or at the very least take another pain med, but he can push it back a bit longer. His eggs ache from the first go, but everything else feels pretty okay right now. He watches the three other men once more try to teach Kaminari how to stand up properly on a snowboard. They're more careful about letting him slide off too far this time like parents keeping an eye on their child. Kaminari is goofy-footed standing, trying to figure out how he should hold his hips and how to maneuver using his own weight and balance. Kirishima is in front of him and Saro at his back, ready to catch him if he starts to fall too far in one direction. They snicker and laugh as Kaminari trips himself up and topples into Kirishima, who catches him quickly against his broad chest. Kaminari is quick to shove at him but it only results in him tumbling back the other way too hard, and if Sarah catches him, it sends them back down into the snow in a fit of laughter. Bakugo burns his tongue on the tea, keeping the hot liquid in his mouth for too long, having forgotten to swallow. Ashido. He starts, keeping the little cup near his mouth so his voice doesn't travel. Christmas is Kirishima's favorite, right? Ashido blinks at him, her dark-rimmed eyes wide and owlish. Uh, duh. You really need me to confirm that? He doesn't. He doesn't need to be asking this either. Then why is his house not decorated? She stills, saying nothing. The silence carrying on for so long that Bakugo turns towards her, eyebrow raised. She bites her lip before saying, The last time his house was decorated like it used to be was the Christmas before his mom died. Yeah. Yeah. Bakugo looks down into his cup of tea, barely seeing the ripple of his reflection looking back at him. That's what I thought. He's mostly busy now. Ashido is quick to fill in, as though she needs to make an excuse for her best friend that isn't sad. During the holidays, he helps everyone out. Well, he does that no matter what the season is. But during the winter and Christmas, he goes into overdrive. A lot of people who live here are older or they don't have anyone else around to help so he always makes sure everyone is set up before ever thinking about himself. Does he ever? She blinks, sighing heavily before looking up at the trio now all down in the mass of white. Riot is barking at them as he hops through the snow. No, not really. I think it's sort of like his way of repenting or something. Helping everyone makes him feel better, or at least lets him ignore whatever else he's supposed to be feeling. I love him, but... Bakugo dumps the rest of his tea into the snow, watching the ice melt under the heat. You wish he was more selfish sometimes. Well. In an instant, she can't speak as a white mass slams into the side of her face, exploding, filling her mouth with ice. Nailed her. Tinky, you are dead. She has another second of wiping snow from her eyes before another snowball hits her right in the chest. Bakugo throws his head back to laugh when a snowball smacks into his chest. 
His glare as he turns to face them could melt the slush right off his face, murdering them where they stand. The three of them stand with snowballs in hand, armed and ready. Sarah points at Kirishima. Bakugo grins. Oh, you're fucking dead, shitty hair. Kirishima balks. Shitty. There's not time for him to object as Bakugo and Ashido are quick to retaliate, jumping from the hood of the truck to use the parked cars as a barrier while they quickly form together snowballs and start pelting the others. A battle starts up quickly with the trio running off to take cover behind the tree line, which leaves their backs open for solid hits for each of them before they can disappear among the tree trunks. You form them all nail between the eyes. He hisses out, both hands curled around a perfectly formed snowball. Ashido salutes him. Roger that, Captain. He's starting to like her more and more. They become a dominating machine. Ashido is exceptionally good at forming the snow into tight, near-perfectly spherical balls that don't fall apart when Bakugo throws them and hits directly where he wants. His eyes are sharp, zeroing in on any movement he sees among the trees and quick to dodge any ammo thrown his way. Two against three never felt so matched as Saro, Kaminari, and Kirishima struggled to keep up. Bakugo hits Saro in the head, a rapid fire that turns into two more throws with one landing at his shoulder. Kaminari nearly gets Bakugo his payback, but he's quick to duck behind the trunk and Ashido is right at his back, throwing one right at Kaminari's face. They get smarter after that, and soon, Bakugo is suddenly assaulted by a charge of all three of them, yelling as they run from the trees with hands loaded and Bakugo isn't fast enough for all of them. Saro tackles Ashido back into the snow, rubbing one of his snowballs in her face to which she squeals in shock as the cold hits her hard. Kaminari only gets one of his in with a solid hit to Bakugo's chest. Bakugo moves to give some payback, but before he can form one up, Kirishima throws two immediately, both hitting Bakugo in the side of his face, one right after the other. Time seems to stand still as snow falls from his cheek and ears, some sticking to his eyelashes and brow, blurring his vision, but it doesn't matter as all he can see is red. Kirishima bites back his smile. Oops. They both move at the same time. Kirishima is yelling as he runs off into the woods. Bakugo quick on his tail, stomping through the snow as quickly as he can, chasing after his prey. Come back here, you idiot, and take your lumps like a man. He shouts, arms moving up to shield his face from three branches when Kirishima weaves and ducks around them. His heart is pounding, limbs burning with the cold. His nose feels like it might actually fall off. Kirishima knows his way better, but Bakugo is pissed off and determined, a combination that hasn't let him down yet. It's more about stamina at this point, and after a few minutes of shouting, laughing, and more shouting, Bakugo starts to catch up. It's when they shift slightly downward that he makes his move, coiling his muscles, and when he sees Kirishima's footing grow a little unstable, he pounces. Gotcha. Bakugo tackles Kirishima down taking hold of his shoulders as they both fall into the snow. It's deep out here and it's hard to see much of anything as their arms and legs go flying, grabbing at each other and wrestling through the slush. They roll a few times with neither of them giving the other the upper hand, but it's brute strength against stubborn skill and Bakugo can only keep pushing the mountain of muscle off of him so many times before the pure strength wins out. Kirishima gets a grip at his forearms and his knees at his thighs, using his full weight to keep Bakugo down. He shoves as soon as Bakugo tries to get up, leaning down with a bright white smile on his face. What was that about gotcha? Bakugo can feel the warmth of his breath against his own lips, and suddenly, suddenly time stands still. The forest around them is silent. The breeze disappears, letting the trees fall quiet. There's not a bird call or a branch breaking herd. Any noise from Kirishima's friends, from the area of parked cars, from the town far beyond the trees and world far beyond that, it's all gone. There's nothing. Nothing except Bakugo's heartbeat, except Kirishima's panting, of how Kirishima straddles him, their chests pressed together, and only an exhale of space between them. They stare. They're still. Bakugo looks and suddenly realizes how much brighter Kirishima's eyes are compared to his own, how close he is, how warm he feels against him, below him. 
how much he wants to kiss him. He wants and wants so badly. And Kirishima isn't moving, isn't pulling back. He's staring at Bakugo just as much, if not more so, and there's a sudden look in his eyes, like he's contemplating, uncertain. And just as it comes, it's gone, and he looks content, settled, and Bakugo is so aware of how his weight shifts forward from his legs to his arms as he leans in more, mouth closing just enough, and Bakugo is leaning up to meet him too, and snow comes crashing down on Kirishima's head. The world turns sharp and sudden, spinning once more. Bakugo hears an echo of the yelling even after it's done. Kirishima topples down beside him, just barely missing Bakugo's body as he shakes off the huge crumble of snow like a dog, turning back sharp with his cheeks red with a fire that burns bright under his skin. He looks about ready to kill for the first time since Bakugo's met him. Kaminari, what the hell, dude? Being as dense as he is, Kaminari doesn't seem to notice what he just rent. Just smiles as he laughs, hands at his hips. Mina made a truce with me and Saro. How the tides have turned. Kirishima stands up as soon as Bakugo does, both growling, both ready to hide a body in the woods, both of their hearts beating far, far too quickly. Bakugo turns his glare at Kaminari, ready to take all of his frustration out on the idiot that interrupted what could have happened. You'll be lucky if they find your body before spring, Pikachu. What Bakugo is now hell-bent determined to make happen. They all run.